So we're very excited about this Volpro project that's going to kick off uh, in the next couple of months. So in January of 2024, we are going to be moving uh, in the first phase Cape vultures and whiteback vultures from the current rehabilitation and breeding centre in the Hattabiaspur Dam area down to Shamwari uh, in the Eastern Cape. Uh, this is very, very significant in the conservation world. This is one of the biggest relocations, or probably the biggest re vulture relocation of its kind ever undertaken in Africa. And we're very, very excited that Volpro have chosen us as an ideal destination for the vultures. Vultures, and I'm going to specifically refer to cave vultures, are Southern Africa's only endemic vulture species. There's only about 4,200 breeding pairs left globally. So South Africa is the stronghold for the species and in fact it is really important to try and prevent further losses for Cape vultures in the Eastern Cape but also bring them back because they actually fulfill a vitally important function in preventing disease outbreaks. And in addition, if vultures are lost in an ecosystem, it is incredibly difficult to remind people to live in harmony with a species that has gone extinct. So we need to do it before we get to that stage. Volpro really was established to dedicate its time, 100% of its time, to protect, conserve, and try and change mindsets of the public as to the importance of vultures and why we need to protect them. We have a very holistic approach. And when I say holistic, we don't only protect the birds in the wild, but we also do a lot of ex situ conservation work. So what we do is we do extensive rehabilitation. So we believe every single vulture deserves a second chance. Also by being able to rehabilitate and release birds back into the wild, we're preventing further losses. We then have taken that further. Because a lot of the birds are not releasable, we're only able to release about 60% of those birds that come in. They then form part of a captive breeding program where they successfully breed and although they themselves cannot be released back into the wild, their offspring can. And so by releasing their offspring into the wild, we're able to supplement the dwindling vulture populations, but also look at areas where the species has become extinct and where they have historically occurred, we're then able to utilize these offspring and release them in the wild and repopulate those areas. So what we're doing today is we're moving most of the birds that, that's, that's in the captive breeding program. And the reason for that is that's birds that's almost like permanently compromised. Some have got wing injuries that that's didn't heal 100%, but have blind eyes and so on. So these birds would have been dying out in the wild if they, if they weren't like rescue. Now the whole translocation today, I'm a little bit nervous about it because every single bird needs to be captured uh, put in a box and then all these boxes get loaded in very big trucks. The DHL company, we're very grateful for them that they made their trucks available for us in sponsoring this transport. And all these crates are being made by We Wild Africa, so they're assisting. So it's a, it's a combination of quite a few companies that's, that's assisting us. But the, the main issue is that we're concerned about is heat. It's midsummer. we have to uh, translocate the birds now because the juveniles are just, just, just old enough for the translocation, but we also can't wait longer because then the breeding is going to start and we don't want to interfere with that process. All the birds are loaded. It actually went a bit quicker than, than I expected. We didn't have any problems, no injuries to the guys uh, capturing the birds, but everything is loaded. Just trapping the, the crates 
uh, and then we'll close up and go. Still a little bit on the hot side, but not too bad. But I'm very happy that we got to the stage. Now we've got an 18-hour trip ahead of us. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit tired tomorrow when we get there, but it's part of it. Massive DHL vehicles are about to arrive with the 160 Cape and Whiteback Vultures. Uh, they'll be arriving here any minute now, but this is a massive achievement for Shimori. And, uh, and as I've said frequently, it's as important as moving 160 rhinos uh, back to the Eastern Cape. I mean, the Cape Vultures are endemic to the Eastern Cape. These birds that are coming down here, uh, they can breed, but they can't fly. So the healthy young chicks will be released back into the wild. So it's a massive day for Shimori. We're all very, very excited. And we're really looking forward to this uh, to this release this morning. This whole entire translocation has been incredibly emotional for me, and um, yeah, I'm trying to kind of hold it together and not burst out crying. Um, lots of different emotions, a lot of butterflies going around, um, but yeah, I just. I think as soon as I see the track, I'll probably end up bursting out crying. These birds, I think they had a long, long trip. Uh, it was quite difficult to I had a good look at every everyone because of the way the crates are stacked. But I think uh, they'll be very happy if we start opening here. So the quicker we do that, the better. Fortunately, it's quite cool. We had quite an obstacle of about 50 kilometers from here. The whole road got blocked because of big wind turbines that was moving past. And the last thing we want at the end of a trip like this, the last thing we want is uh, stationary trucks. But uh, fortunately, we threw all of that and we can start offloading now. This is what we've been working at for the last couple of months. Uh, so this is really, it's, it's almost like, like a little bit emotional, but so glad it's been done. And so glad we did build all of this. And uh, the fact that these birds are going to be completely free quite soon, unbelievable. It's very, very important in, 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 in terms of what Shamari have been trying to achieve over, over 30 odd years. Um, you know, we started with them bringing back the antelope species, uh, the major herbivores like elephant, black rhino, white rhino, buffalo, and then eventually the cats. The red-billed oxpeck was reintroduced as well. Flightless dung beetles were reintroduced. And now this is the next chapter in our journey, which is the reintroduction of the Cape vulture to the Eastern Cape, and also the, the breeding of the other vulture species at our, at our uh, breeding and rehabilitation center in the Eastern Cape. It just is the ongoing journey. There are a few other species that we'd like to bring back to Shimori if we can become bigger in size. Like we'd love to bring the, uh, the wild dog back and the spotted hyena, but to be able to do that, we'll have to uh, acquire more land and increase the size of Shamori. But that's all down the pipeline. So it fits in exactly with our conservation ethos of conserving a vanishing way of life and rewilding this entire area where Shamori is based. The reason why Shamwari is such a perfect fit is really because of the ethos and what the reserve has done to bring species back into the Eastern Cape. And vultures is a species that is, I think it's one out of three species that hasn't been brought back into Shamwari. But over and above that, the support, the size of the reserve, the habitat, and the historical nature of what we are trying to do where Cape vultures used to occur around the area, including Shamari, is really important. So it is a perfect synergy to bring the birds back 
and to do it at Shamwari, but to also create the largest captive breeding population at a site which has phenomenal support and has phenomenal reputation in being able to bring species back into an area. And I don't think anywhere else in the country has been as successful as what Shamari has been.